Now let's turn our attention to the ongoing Africa Development Bank Group's annual meeting, which of course uh, officially comes to a close today. Uh, the bank's group president, Akimumi Adeshino, has said Africa suffers disproportionately from the negative impact of climate change, including increased frequency and intensity of droughts, cyclones, floods, compounded by desertification. He said this is despite the fact that Africa contributes the least to global warming, accounting for only 4% of all carbon emissions. Additional said, quote, climate change is shortchanging African economies. Africa suffers $7 to $15 billion per year in losses to climate change. These losses are projected to rise to $40 billion per year by 2030. And he is also calling on Africans to rise up to address the challenges on the continent. Well, let's get talking now as Mr. Kasim Ogarawa Karafi, MD CEO, App Security and Mutual Funds Limited, joins us on Zoom to further analyze this issue. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Karafi. Kasim, can you hear me? Okay, we'll uh, join Mr. Garba Karafi uh, later on on the show. But of course, uh, we're looking at the meeting, the ongoing AFDB annual meeting, which uh, starts uh, on the 23rd of uh, May. And of course, they've been talking about uh, different issues, focusing on climate change majorly, and of course, uh, food production in Africa. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Kasim Garba, Garba Karafi. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I heard you at the beginning, but toward the end, I couldn't hear what you end up saying. Yeah, well, I can hear you now, and I guess we can just shoot. Okay, let's talk okay. about uh, this uh, ongoing meeting, which of course comes to a close today. According to the Africa Development Bank, nine out of ten most vulnerable countries to climate change are in Africa, and that. Uh, Africa is the second most vulnerable region to climate change in the world. And the statistics also reveals that uh, annually Africa loses $7 billion to $15 billion due to climate change. And it is expected to rise to $50 billion a year by 2040. How can we prevent this? Well, I think we can prevent it if collectively all our governments sit down and see the problem as one. Because today, take the issue of mosquito. Mm. Do you know how many people become a victim of mosquito in Africa? This is a pass in Europe, a pass in Asia. They have killed mosquito and they don't have malaria. Even here, as close as Saudi Arabia, if you ask for malaria, they don't have because they have killed mosquito. But Africa failed to do it because even if Nigeria decided to do it, what of Cameroon, what of Chad, what of Niger, what of Togo, what of Benin? So African need Okay, talking about uh, climate change and how it affects Africa and Nigeria specifically, especially when you consider the fact that, uh, you know, the financing needs, according to the AFDB, to address this climate change uh, ranges between $1.3 trillion to $1.6 trillion, uh, and that's between 2020 and 2030, according to statistics released by the AFDB. Are you here, are you here with us? Yes, I'm hearing you. All I'm right, go ahead, please. Hearing you. So what I'm saying that Africa, we have to look at the problem as once for all. Take the issue of Lake Chad. Mm. Lake Chad today, it becomes so devastating that a lot of Africa, including Nigeria, Niger, Cameroon, and Chad, have lost their livelihood because the water is shrinking and they have done nothing. Mm. So we need to collectively address our problem. Let us not see our problem as only related to Nigeria. Mm. And if we do that, we will be better and we will be able to overcome it. Most of rivers cross along the nation. Our boundary of ocean cross along the nations. So when you look at it, whatever our problem, even the desert is coming, is across the nation. So we need to collectively sit down and address this problem, which if we do, it will work for us. Mm. At the same time, Africans, they have to be very careful. Remember, Ethiopia is building a dam, which invariably will affect Sudan and Egypt. So we must not do certain things for ourselves that will devastate the 
the climate situation of our colleagues. Mm. Why don't you sit down collectively and do what is needful? When Nigeria decided to build Kanji Dam, they contacted country like Niger. And Niger decided not to do it. And now we extend our electricity to Niger. Mm. That, if Niger decided to for electricity, what water will be left for Nigeria? Mm. So we must African down collectively and look at ourselves. Okay, we'll link back up with him, some audio issues there, and uh, we would fix it, of course, and get back to the conversation. But uh, if you look at uh, all of this, he's talking about Africa coming together as a whole to deal with these issues, especially when it comes to climate change. But well, we'll take a break now, and the conversation continues afterwards. Please stay with us. Thank you so much for staying with us. We're still talking about the AFDB's uh, annual meeting going on in Accra, Ghana. And of course, uh, we have uh, Mr. Kasimo Garaba Karofi on, the, on Zoom with us talking to us about these issues. Just before the break, we were talking about the need for a collective effort by Africa as a whole and not just different countries uh, trying to solve this issue with uh, climate change. I'd like you to land on that thought before we move the conversation further. Yes, when you look at our position in Africa, most we are related. Take, for instance, the River Niger. River Niger cross over five countries. Take River Nile. It cross over three countries. Take Lake Tangyanka. It cross over five countries. The same thing was Lake Chad. So we are related mm. in most of these problems, and we have to address them collectively. Otherwise, individual will not be able to call, uh, address it, and therefore the problem will continue prevailing. Mm. As long as we look at ourselves alone, we have problem. But as long as we look at ourselves as one, we address the problem and we are better off. Sub-Sahara doesn't keep on coming, and we are seen the prostrated across West Africa. Mm. So is it only for Nigeria? No. It cut across Africa, and therefore we have to take measures that will cut across the country. Mm. Which means we'll have to pull funds together. But I'm wondering how feasible that is, considering the fact that uh, the financing needs uh, to address this climate change ranges between $1.3 trillion to $1.6 trillion uh, between 2020 and 2030. And that's according to the Africa Development Bank. How feasible is it for us to come together to pull these resources together, especially in terms of funding? It is by doing the uh, visibility study to find out the viable of the project and what is the economic outcome. For instance, we are thinking that we move water from Congo to Lake Chad. If we look at the viability and the economic benefit, even the World Bank and other banks can now invest into that project. At the end of the day, Nigeria will be better off, Cameroon will be better off, Chad will be better off, Niger will be better off. Mm. So, all the projects that we are doing, let us come with, uh, with, uh, uh, look at the viability of that project and the economic benefit of it. If you do it, you make it bankable. Spread into that, and we can overcome it. Mm. But the moment we are looking at the social... Okay, talking about ways to pull funds together to address this issue, especially as we see that we have diverse people, diverse nations uh, that make, make up the continent called Africa. And also, according to the AFDB, they've talked about uh, different issues concerning uh, food supply in Africa. I particularly uh, would like us, we would be focusing on the issue 
of the food supply in Africa. Thank you for joining us again, Mr. Garuba Karafi. Okay, <laughs> we will definitely continue the conversation as soon as we establish connection with uh, Mr. Karafi. But of course, talking about uh, the food supply in Africa, uh, we saw the AFDB president, Akiwumi Adeshino, saying that Africa can sustain itself when it comes to food. Thank you for joining us again. Mr. Karafi, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, we're still having some issues, but of course, uh, we'll get back to the conversation with Mr. Karafi. Uh, so talking about uh, food uh, supply in Africa, we see uh, Mr. Akiwumi Adeshin, or the FDB president, saying boldly that Africa can feed itself and we don't have to go bowl in hand to other countries to ask for food. And this is one bold statement that we should analyze and understand better how possible or how feasible it is. Thank you for joining us again. Okay, thank you. It is very uh, possible by taking comparative advantage. Okay. Take, for instance, Nigeria. Do you know we are the large producer of cassava and yam tubes? So if we take advantage of this one, we can supply cassava and yam to, to most of the, not only West Africa, Central Africa and other rest of the Africa. Mm. Then the other one also look at it. Cameroon is very good in um, producing banana. Even with the banana, they can supply the West Africa. Mm. Take Cote d'Ivoire. They are very good in uh, cocoa. So <laughs> let every country look at where they have comparative advantage and emphasize in doing that better so that the other aspect of the food can be supplied by the neighbors. Mm. If we do that, we will be better off. But try to try for all and you end up with a piecemeal. It takes us nowhere. And that is one of the problems of Africa. Everybody wants to do everything. And you cannot be that. You must specialize where you have comparative advantage and mm. take that advantage to the, your neighbors. In other words, so everyone comes to the table with something. But if you look at yeah. the proposal of the AFDB, they are proposing uh, supplying a, a $1.5 billion package, uh, which of course would lead to the production of 1 million tons of wheat uh, 18 million tons of maize, 6 million tons of rice, 2.5 million tons of soybeans. And of course, they are also talking about providing seeds for farmers and mechanical implement. But if you look at all of those proposals, as good as they are on paper, are we considering providing technical know-how for these farmers, especially when it comes to handling these mechanical implements? Yes, we are. We have university, we have research institution that can pick our soil and give us the best out of it. We just started with rice in Nigeria. Today, we can say proudly that we can produce up to 90% of our local demand for the rice. So if we improve the yield and we improve our research, mm. I can tell you in few years, we will be the exporter. Not importing, we will be exporting. Mm. Just like what we do to the smell. So it applies to other industry. Let each country see where they have comparable, uh, comparative advantage. Mm. Take this one, bring it. The research institute will do it here. We test your soil, get fertilizer that will uh, enable you to have high yield. You know, you don't In use... Nigeria, we have over 54 plants of fertilizer production. Mm. Before, we have let them pipe. And this makes enough. With the number of fertilizer factory, it will make even the urea available not only for Africa, but even beyond Africa. Mm. So if we take all these comparative advantage, we can reach out to our neighbors and everybody know where you are specialized and take advantage of that and do more of it. Mm. You know, you just used, or you've actually been using his exact words. He talked about Africa having, or Nigeria having a competitive advantage and that we should leverage on these competitive advantages to ensure that we boost food production in the country. But I'd like you to help us know uh, what Nigeria can take out of this whole annual meeting, which of course has focused on climate change and also focused mm -hmm. on food production in Africa, especially Nigeria. Okay, in Nigeria, we have the population, we have the land, we have a good climate position. So therefore, we have tried rice, it's work. I believe you, if you try fish, we can succeed in fish, we can succeed in cassava, we can succeed in yam too. Take the issue of weeds. If we now address it by our research, we have abundant land, 
that we can succeed on it. Mm. So if we take only this for product where we have comparative advantage and work on it, even the palm oil with Perisco with Ocom oil, if we expand their capacity and with good yield, I can tell you they can meet all the Nigerian demand and industrial demand and supply beyond this. Then we improve our storage facility. Mm. Our major problem in Africa is storage facility. 50% of our production is waste because we lack storage facility and the facility that will enable us to reach our destination. Mm. Then the transportation. We must improve our transportation by rail, by water, and by road. And if we do that, you will see that the price differential will reduce to the barest minimum. Today, a basket of tomato can be got at Kura in Kano State at less than 500. But these will be traded at 7,000 in Kano mm. because they lack the storage facility and the, the transportation cost. Yes, if we in improve upon all this, they will reduce the cost of this product by more than 50%. Mm. And we can apply the same across Africa. And if we do this, I believe that the sky is our limit. Mm, well, quite instructive thoughts there. Thank you so much, Mr. Kasim Garabakarafi, MDCEO at Security and Mutual Funds Limited for your time on Business Breakfast. Thank you for having me. Have a good day.